The Israeli military says that it has killed a top Hezbollah commander in an airstrike in Lebanon. The Israeli Defense Forces identified him as Ismail Al-Zin. They added that Al-Zin was responsible for dozens of anti-tank missile attacks against Israeli civilians. However, Hezbollah reportedly said that Al-Zin was not a senior figure. Tens of thousands of Israelis gathered outside the parliament building in Jerusalem yesterday. They urged the government to reach a ceasefire deal to free dozens of hostages held by Hamas. They also called on the government to hold early elections. This was the largest anti-government demonstration since the country went to war in October. Reports say the U.S. and Israel are expected to hold a virtual meeting today. This is to discuss alternatives to Israel's looming offensive in, Ga in Rafah. Earlier, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had cancelled the meeting. This was after the U.S. chose not to veto a resolution by the United Nations Security Council that called for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. However, the White House later said that Israel and the U.S. had agreed to reschedule the meeting. Turkey's main opposition party has claimed victory in Istanbul and Ankara in local elections. This marks the biggest defeat for President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and his Justice and Development Party, or AKP, in over two decades. Mayor Ekrem Imamoglu of the Republican People's Party, or CHP, said that he has defeated the governing AKP candidate by more than one million votes. Supporters of Imamolu were seen celebrating his lead on the streets in Turkey. At least seven people have been killed and 30 others were injured in a car bombing in Syria. The car exploded in a busy marketplace in the town of Azaz during peak shopping hours. So far, no group has taken responsibility for the attack. Russia said that it has conducted a counter-terrorism operation in the southern region of Dagestan. The country's security services say they have detained three men who were allegedly planning attacks in the region. Russia is on high alert following a mass shooting at a concert hall in Moscow on March 22nd. It was the deadliest attack in the country in 20 years. According to a report, the residence of Libyan Prime Minister Abdul Hamid al Debeba was targeted, in a rocket, targeted with rocket-propelled grenades. The attack has caused some damage, but no casualties were reported. Two citizens say they heard massive explosions in the neighborhood. Following this, security forces were deployed around the area. China has renamed 30 places in India's Arunachal Pradesh. The Chinese Ministry of Civil Affairs published the country's latest set of what it calls standardized names for places in the state. Beijing has renamed 11 residential areas, 12 mountains, 4 rivers, 1 lake, 1 mountain pass and a piece of land. The president of the Philippines, Ferdinand Marcos Jr., has ordered his government to boost maritime security. He has signed an order seeking to confront challenges to territorial integrity and peace. This comes amid rising disputes with Beijing over the South China Sea. Following this, China said that its sovereignty and maritime rights will not be affected, no matter what policies the Philippines rolls out. Indonesia's president-elect Prabowo Subianto landed in Beijing yesterday. Prabowo's schedule includes a meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping. He is visiting China for three days at the invitation of Xi Jinping. This is the first international trip for the incoming Indonesian leader since winning the election in February. Meanwhile, French Foreign Minister Stéphane uh, Sejour met with his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi in Beijing. This comes as China, uh, France and China have sought to strengthen ties in recent years. Sejour's trip is likely in preparation for Chinese President Xi Jinping's visit to France. Uh, in February, French President Emmanuel Macron met with Wang Yi in Paris. During the meet, Macron expressed his desire to cooperate with China and organize a high-level meeting by the end of this year. 
South Korean President Yoon suk yeol has doubled down on the government's plan to increase the country's medical school admission quota by 2,000. He has pledged not to back down. Instead, he accused the striking doctors of operating as a quote-unquote cartel by denying, them, uh, denying their duties. Some uh, 12,000 junior doctors in South Korea have been on strike since early February. This is over the government's proposal to increase medical school admissions. In Mexico, protesters gathered to mark the International Transgender Day of Visibility. They rallied in Mexico City, demanding a law protecting the rights of transgender people. The protesters marched down the city's iconic Reforma Avenue from the Senate building. The demonstrators also shed light on the discrimination and threats that they commonly face. In January this year, the murder of at least four members of the transgender community sparked a nationwide outcry. Germany has decriminalized the use of personal use of cannabis. Smoking cannabis will now be legal for people over 18 years old in the country. As of April 1st, adults in Germany are allowed to carry up to 25 grams of dried cannabis. They are also allowed to cultivate up to three marijuana plants at home. In climate news, large parts of China have been hit by severe hailstorms and thunderstorms. The country's meteorological department has issued an extreme weather warning for the following two days. It added that thunderstorms, uh, gale and hail will batter some regions like uh, Chongqing, uh, Guizhou and Hunan. A fatal cyclone has killed at least five people in the Indian state of West Bengal. Over 70 have been reported injured. The storm damaged houses and uprooted several trees. The severe weather conditions also affected the nearby state of Assam, where heavy rainfall created havoc. Approximately six flights were delayed due to the bad weather conditions. Meanwhile, the Indian Meteorological Department has issued a heat wave warning for parts of central and southern India. Heat waves are expected to impact parts of Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, North Karnataka and Telangana. The weather agency has said that for the next five days, the region is expected to see high temperatures, warm nights and humid weather conditions. Heavy rains have claimed the lives of at least 10 people in various parts of Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. The local disaster management authority has reported at least 12 injuries at, uh, due to these inc incidents. Officials have said that the downpours in different parts of the province have resulted in the collapse of homes, crushing people inside them. Canada's Energy and Natural Resources Minister, Jonathan Wilkinson, has said that the country is not interested in subsidizing liquefied natural gas or LNG projects in the future. Wilkinson added that the government is opposed to using public money to fund fossil fuel projects. This comes as environmental groups have been putting pressure on the Canadian government to stop LNG projects. Climate change is causing heat waves and extreme temperatures to persist longer than usual in a region. This is according to a new study published in the US journal Science Advances. As per the report, the duration of heat waves has increased from an average of 8 days to 12 days in the last 5 years. The report warns that if greenhouse gas emissions continue to rise, heat waves will result in severe impacts on natural systems. On to business and tech news. The e uh, economic growth of developing countries in East Asia is set to slow down in the coming years. This is according to a new a report by the World Bank. The report says that East Asia will see GDP growth of 4.5% in 2024 and 4.3% in 2025. This is below the 5% economic growth reported last year. The report say that higher interest rates and geopolitical tensions have clouded the outlook for the region. Israel's rising defense spending is posing risks to its economy. This is according to the country's central bank governor, Amir Yaron. In a report to the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Yaron has said that the war in Gaza has sharply increased public debt in comparison to the country's GDP. He added that the rising debt level could lead to increased inflation in the country and weaken the local currency. Japanese health authorities are investigating the factories of the pharma company Kobayashi. This is after the firm reported at least five deaths and 114 hospitalizations, possibly linked to a dietary pill. 
Kobayashi has said it uh, said it has found a puberolic acid in the pill made from red yeast. As per Japanese, as per the Japanese health ministry, the substance can be toxic. So far, the country's health authorities have inspected two factories uh, of the pharmaceutical firm in Japan. India's top oil refiner, Indian Oil, is forming a joint venture with Japan's Panasonic Energy. The two firms will together manufacture lithium-ion cells in India. Lithium-ion uh, batteries power electric vehicles and are used to store electricity. The firms have said that they expect the demand for these batteries to rise in the Indian market. Car maker Kia is recalling over 427,000 Telluride SUVs in the US. This is due to a problem with the car's shafts, which can lead to the cars moving while they are parked. Kia has decided to recall certain models of uh, Tellurides that were manufactured between 2020 and 2024. China's SAIC Motors is reportedly planning to cut thousands of jobs this year. The job cuts will impact workers at the firm's joint ventures with General Motors and Volkswagen. As per the report, SAIC will lay off over 30% of its employees at SAIC General Motors, while SAIC Volkswagen may see a 10% workforce reduction. The company is also planning to cut more than half of the employees at its electric car unit. Xiaomi has said that buyers of its first electric car, the SU7, may have to wait as much as seven months for their deliveries. The firm has said that the delivery time for the standard SU7 model may be around 18 to 21 weeks. Meanwhile, the car's most expensive model, the SU7 Max, may take 27 to 30 weeks for delivery. This comes after the firm received around 900, uh, sorry, 90,000 orders in just the first 24 hours after the car was launched last week. China has said that America's new semiconductor export rule puts a heavy compliance burden on Chinese and American companies. The Chinese government also said that the new export curbs create a huge uncertainty for the global semiconductor industry. Last week, the U.S. revised its semiconductor export rules. The new rules seek to hold exports of advanced artificial intelligence chips and chip-making tools to China. The stock market valuation of South Korean chip maker SK Hynix has reached over $100 billion. This comes as investors continue to buy shares of artificial intelligence firms. SK Hynix is a key supplier of artificial, in uh, artificial intelligence chip maker NVIDIA. The firm's stock has gained over 60% in the South Korean stock exchange in the last six months. Personal data belonging to over 73 million customers of the U.S. telecom firm AT&T has been leaked on the dark web. This includes the personal data of 7.6 million current AT&T customers and over 65 million former customers. According to the firm, this data includes customer addresses, social security numbers and passwords. AT&T has said that the data breach occurred in early March this year and the data involved is likely from 2019 or before that. Moving on to sports, we start with cricket and the IPL. Delhi Capitals beat Chennai Super Kings by 20 runs yesterday. Opting to bat, the Delhi Capitals posted 191 in their 20 overs. Wicketkeeper batter Rishabh Pant hit 51 from 32 balls and David Warner made 52 from 35 for Delhi. Chennai could only reach 171 for 6 in a reply with Ajinkya Rahane top scorer uh, for them with 45 from 30 balls. The Delhi Capitals skipper Rishabh Pant has been fined over 14,000 US dollars. His side was found guilty of breaching the ICC code of conduct during the match against the Chennai Super Kings. This was for maintaining a slow over rate. This was the second instance of uh, this happening in this IPL season of a captain being fined for slow over rates during a match. Pakistan's cricket board has reappointed Babar Azam as the captain of white ball cricket yesterday. This means Azam will be leading the ODI and T20 international squad for the side. He left his role after Pakistan failed to reach the semi-finals of last year's ODI World Cup. The move comes just ahead of the T20 World Cup that starts in the month of June.
In football, a high-octane Premier League clash between Manchester City and Arsenal ended in a goalless stalemate. City had 73% of the possession but struggled to make anything of it in front of a resolute Arsenal defence. This ended Arsenal's eight-match uh, winning run in the Premier League and led City uh, preserve its unbeaten home stretch uh, stretching back to November 2022. Liverpool beat Brighton 2-1 at Anfield in an English Premier League match yesterday. Danny Welbeck's goal after just uh, 85 seconds gave Brighton the lead, but Liverpool restored order with an equaliser from Luis Diaz later in the first half before Mohamed Salah fired the winner. Liverpool are now top of the table, uh, two points clear of Arsenal and three ahead of, ahead of City. In tennis, uh, Yannick Sinner of Italy has clinched the ATP Miami Open Masters 1000 title. He beat Bulgarian Grigor Dimitrov 6-3, 6-1 in the final yesterday. This is Sinner's third title of the season. He has now dethroned Carlos Alcaraz of Spain to achieve his career-high ranking of world number two. Meanwhile, Indian tennis star Rohan Bopana and his Australian partner Matthew Epton have won the men's doubles final of the Miami Open. The Indo-Australian pair beat Croatia's Ivan Dodic and uh, American Austin Krajicek 7-6-3-10-6. The match lasted an hour and 43 minutes. Andy Murray has pulled out of the Monte Carlo Masters as well as the Munich Open. This is due to a severe ankle injury that he sustained during the Miami Open. Murray hurt his ankle in the deciding set of his match against the Czech player Thomas Amatak last Sunday. After the incident, Murray said uh, it may keep him out of court for an extended period. The owner of Formula One, Liberty Media, will be taking over MotoGP's parent company, Dorna Sports. Reports say the acquisition is worth over four billion US dollars. Liberty Media CEO Greg Maffei said that the major announcement will be made this week. Indian weightlifter Mirabai Chanu will be back in action after six months uh, off due to an injury. She will feature at the International 2024 Weightlifting World Cup starting in Thailand on Sunday. This is the final qualifying event for weightlifting for the upcoming Paris Olympics. Chanu is second in the Olympic qualification ranking for the women's 49kg category. In entertainment news, fans of Beyoncé are claiming that there are some missing tracks from her latest album, Cowboy Carter. A total of five songs are not, in, uh, not there, including Yaya and Spaghetti on the final version. Some fans reported that their CD version is also missing four tracks. The customers paid about $40 to pre-order the vinyl versions. Rapper and singer Kendrick Lamar disappointed his fans who were waiting for him at the Tech 8 light stage in Mexico. Lamar, who was supposed to headline the show, cancelled his performance just hours before the concert. The event organizers announced this on Instagram and uh, the reason for the cancelled performance was uh, said to be logistical issues. South Korean singer Kim Tae-hyung, known as V, attended a football game in Chuncheon Sea City. He's currently fulfilling his mandatory military service. The singer was seen sitting behind his fellow army mates and enjoying the game. Screens at the stadium also showed a glimpse of him to the audience. Godzilla X Kong, the new empire, has opened at uh, the Global Box with a collection of about $194 million. It earned about $80 million from over 3,000 North American theaters. The film has now become the highest grossing movie of the year, after Dune Part 2, which collected around uh, $600 million. Godzilla X Kong, the new empire, released on the 29th of March. Eight months uh, after several global awards, including an Oscar, Oppenheimer released in Japan on the 29th of March. The film debuted at the Japanese box office with a collection of about $2.5 million. It was released in 343 theaters. The film's release was delayed due to the sensitivity of the subject. Oppenheimer built an atomic bombs during World War II, which killed thousands of Japanese people. The film originally released in July last year. 
fans are eagerly waiting for the release of the upcoming Anti-Justice League film titled The Authority. James Gunn, the CEO of DC Studios, revealed on social media that the film is yet to finalize the script. He has said this after a user asked him if they've roped in anyone for the movie yet. According to reports, the founding members of the Anti-Justice League will be seen in the upcoming Superman film. Actor Sydney Sweeney took to social media to state that the reports about her sharing screen space with Johnny Depp was nothing more than a rumour. This came after several reports stated that she'd been roped in for a film called Day Drinker, which will be held by the Spider-Man director Mark Webb. Rome Flynn, who played the role of Jake Gibson in the show Chicago Fire, has exited the show after six episodes. He announced his departure on social media. It's unclear whether he will appear on the show again. Meanwhile, Andre Newman, the showrunner, announced that a phenomenal actor will soon join the cast. Actor Rebel Wilson revealed in an interview that she has used Ozempic for weight loss. Ozempic is used to control blood sugar levels in diabetic patients, which also results in weight loss. Wilson stated that for someone like her who has a bottomless appetite for sweets, that drug is good. The actor wanted to lose weight after her doctor told her that it would improve her success with pregnancy. The drug has uh, been surrounded by controversy after celebrities admitting to use it, using it as a weight loss drug. Actor Matthew Underwood claimed on social media that he was sexually harassed at the age of 19 by his agent. He wrote that this incident pushed him out of Los Angeles City and also ended his acting career. Underwood further revealed that he was molested by his best friend's stepfather when he was 12. He said all these incidents betrayed his trust and crushed his self-image.